Okay, folks, here we are again. Back with the internet. It's fixed. So, what did you miss? Nothing. We have sealed and put the second coat of uh, on these figures. So the flat coat is on there and it's drying. And once that's dry, we can goop these guys on the stand. So a couple of maintenance issues that we need to do, take care of, so we can keep plugging along. Just trim the edges of the, of the stand that these guys are gonna go on. So in about maybe an hour, a couple hours or whatever, we'll let these guys dry nice and, nice and dry and we'll goop them on a stand. Okay, so we're just going to set these guys off to the side here and the base that they go on off to the side. Well, let's take a couple, look at a couple things. We've got our Polish allies that are over here in the box. We've already uh, established who these guys are going to be. And I believe this is three stands of knights. And they toppled over here. Oh, we don't need this. Should be three stands of knights. Should be nine knights in here. And we need a fast blade in here as well. So let's go ahead and get the fast blade guys um, glued. And we should be over here in a box. high. Woo! Get ready to get high. All right. And let me look through where I put these guys because in my haste of cleaning up my work area, I just threw them over here. That's not the one I'm in. Okay, that's the Byzantines. All right. Let's sift through this. This is all, this is a crap load of poles. I'm gonna set that off to the side. I think they were, I think they were loose. I don't think I put them in the bag with everything else. What's this? This is Lithuanians. A bag of Lithuanians. More of these Moldavian type knights. These are. They may be in here. I see cavalry. Yep, they're there. Well, that didn't take long. Let's put all this crap back. This is even my pile of lead. This one doesn't count. The big pile of lead is down here on the floor. All right, so let's take a look at these. We're looking for the fast blade stand. And here they are right here. Wagon, wagon crews, more generals, an artillery piece, some crossbowmen, another wagon, cavalry guys as in cavalry as opposed to knights. Okay. So Let's look at poses. We have one guy over here, one guy looking over there, one guy straight forward. 
another guy straight forward, another guy looking over here, another guy looking over here, another guy straight forward, another guy looking over here. So there's only two poses. There's only two poses. So with that said, I'm going to take two of this guy and one of him. Okay. I only need three at this moment. And here's these go back in the bag. And let's grab some pennies. Anthony Holton. Welcome. New project. Yeah, so uh, the Moldavian Knights are, are done. They're drying right now. And I'm putting together some Polish allies for them. And um, I did find that that file the other day that I was looking for it. Here it is. And um, so it's kind of a new project, but it isn't. It's kind of an addition to these guys. So we're going to build some Polish allies for these guys. And um, we got to black base these guys. And then we're going to have to want to get a camp for the Moldavians that's not the impaled skeletons. I really want to keep that to just Dracula. That's kind of his thing. Um, so we're going to look through the big pile of lead. I've got baggage horses. I just need to pick some out. Maybe a little make a 40 by 40 stand that we can use for as a baggage element that we can also use as a camp. And uh, that's what we're going to use as the camp of that. Moldavians, very interesting. Yeah, they're... The Balakian army's done. The Moldavians just uh, adds the cavalry, the uh, the knight general stand, and we're done with that. They're over here. They're over here drying. Well, we got the flag ready for them and everything. So we'll wait for those guys to dry a little bit longer. Just trying to multitask. You know, I said I'm not a good multitasker. Well, I'm not too bad when I'm doing it like this. I want to I want to stay busy. We want to get things done. The sooner we get done with these guys, the sooner we can go mess with some Byzantines. That's the next project. That's the new project. So, we're going to clean up these. I tried using a little file on this. I actually got a set of small files and it's a lot easier to use the exacto knife blade than small files. They're just not small enough. They're just not small enough. These guys are Polish Axemen. These represent a fast blade stand. Some Bardishas. These are unarmored folks. Or If they've got armor on them, they're underneath their, their robes or their, their clothing. And the internet's back up because we had issues with the internet this morning. Had of uh, storm that kind of rolled through here and knocked the internet out for about four hours but that didn't matter we kept on doing our project on mobile it took about an hour break and uh, now we're back at it okay and this guy's had this interesting hat on him almost looked like a Greek Orthodox priest. Okay, I want to make sure these guys can stand up on their own because when I go to glue them, I want them to be kind of self sufficient. Okay. All right, we'll take these three guys, glue, glue, and glue, and move them over here to the corner. Now, the knights are already glued. As always, we're going to paint the similar knights together to make sure we don't um, have repeats. And that's what we're going to do. We're doing three stands of, we're doing a stand of fast blades and three stands of knights. I could do a stand of cavalry, but 
I'm not going to mess with that. We'll make them all. We'll make them all knights for the allies. I'm. I'm. I have to take a knight general. I have to take a knight, and I have to take either a knight or a cavalry, and then the other one is any of the other choices. So. You just started a 7th century Mercian army using Daniel Mercy's new Wiglaf figure sculpted by cobblestone. That sounds like something that's in 28 millimeter. Cobblestone. Cobblestone I think makes some tens too, right? They, they're heroic looking. They're, I've seen some of their figures. They're nice figures. Mm. Okay, let's dig through and see if we can find the pack horses. I'm pretty sure they're all together. And this is the part where you get to see lots and 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 lots of lead. Unless they're at the top. So let's see what the hell I got here. This is just stuff that I neglected to put away well. We got some Arabs here from one of my Arab projects. Let's just check this out. <laughs> Look at this. Here's a mule already. <laughs> I didn't think they were they were very deep. I was gonna build one of these after a while. Arabs, 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 Arabs. More Arabs, more Arabs. Old glory. All kinds of old glory Arabs. Mini figs. I know that's one of the horses right there. No, 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 no. Okay, here's another pack horse, but this one has like a Roman type shield on it. So we don't want to use that. We'll keep him nearby because that could be something I can do. I can make a baggage element for a Roman period army. That's kind of like an Imperial Roman type shield that we have. What else do we have here? Nothing else. None of these are baggage. Okay. Ooh. All right. Set this down here. I'm going to be switching to and from glasses like a maniac. So. Uh, 18 mil. Okay, so they're heroic 15s. Cool. Mercian army. Is that like a Dark Ages England? Wigloff figures. Why haven't I heard about those? Why haven't I heard about those? Let me take a look at them. It should be, it should be pretty easy, right? Wigloff figures. No, I didn't ask to do that. Nope. Press, but Wigloff run by Daniel Mercy, specialized in producing 18 millimeter metal wargaming miniatures for the British Dark Ages or early medieval period. The model sculpted by Mark Copplestone in a similar style to his fantasy, fantasy Barbarica range. They're carried by North Star. See what we got? Warlords and followers, armored, armored warriors. Well, I'm having trouble talking today. Uh, unarmed warriors, skirmishers. Well, let's take a look at one of these guys, what these warlords and followers look like. Can't get enough warlords. Let's see what we got. Oh, these guys are nice. Me likey. Penda. He's actually a greatest general. I've never heard of the guy. Kind of a feminine name for a dude. Penda. <laughs> I know. He'd split me in two if he could hear me. Oh, these look nice. Cool. So those are like uh, early Anglo-Saxons or something like that. Dark Ages mostly fighting other Saxons, Welsh, and Irish. Very cool. Well, you're doing something that most people don't do. All right, this is a whole bag. Of Middle Eastern Seljuk Turk type dudes. I 
don't think I, I don't think I need to open this up. I'm gonna set it off to the side because if that's my Arab bag, they're probably in there. All right, what do we got in here? This is Norman's Ahoy. This is ye bag of Normans. Mixture of old glory and there's some Essex in here and some. Tabletop games. One of the leader figures is based on the armor from Sutton Hoo Burial. Yeah, that's a cool freaking helmet. Been out running errands in the last hour. I see my internet's back up. Yes. It went down for about four hours and it's back. Okay, this is Assyrians. A book one army. Oh, I'm not on my... I'm on the delayed one. Let me get back on here. Here we go. Thanks for checking him out, Tony. Very kind. Is it your company? Yeah, I think they look great. I'm not super interested in that period of history, but that's not my heritage. I'm not, you know, I don't know that any of my ancestors came from the British Isles. But that doesn't mean I, you know... I don't have any Korean ancestors either, but I have a Korean army, so that only takes you so far, you know? That, that isn't always the case. Uh, this is medieval of some sort. Where's that other bag of the Arabs? We start getting too far in here, I'll open up that Arab one because it's probably where it is. This is just a mixture of all kinds of stuff. Okay, these are the Byzantines that are for an earlier period. These are like the uh, Marikian Byzantines and stuff. That I have. Okay. We played with those the other day. Or we sorted them out. This is my late Imperial Romans from Old Glory. They're, um, let's see if we can, there we go. These guys are, um, I think I bought every single pack that Old Glory made of the late Imperials, and I haven't almost exactly enough to make an East and a West. And I Built like three stands of the East and never did anything with them. They're for, a, they're for an event. History is just fun. It is. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Who in the hell are these guys? Oh, is this like Ottoman hell? It is. Oh, and in here. Looky, looky. This is... My Mameluk Egyptian army. So I already have them all together. And this is a mixture of museums and, and all kinds of other stuff. So at some point we're going to do a... That's almost who won, who are the next guys. Uh, hello again, Eric. So I already put these guys... I think when I was getting ready to do the, uh, the last army before I ended up... Put, seeing if I had enough to do those guys. Yep, Mameluke Egyptians. And they're here in the bag of bag of Turks. Okay. What do we got here? See, this is what happens when I get stuck on a project. This is my Mongols. I even put them on stands and everything. I was going to build them for an event. And then... Uh, and then never got, a, never got them off the ground. Oh, here's some camels. Here's some baggage camels. This is um, the mongoloids. This is a bag of mongoloids. Is it proper to call them mongoloids? I don't know. It's a race, isn't it? Okay. These are some galls. I don't have very many galls. Those got those in a tournament. This is odds and ends and feudal Spanish galore. Feudal Spanish. This is medieval hell, including including these folks from uh, Roundway, which sadly it looks like the guy. Um, 
John Roberts closed up shop and isn't tra trading them anymore. My ethnic background has no effect on the armies that I paint. It did on my first one. I painted Spanish for my first one. Oh, found one. Found another camel in here. Yeah, when people start off, I'm like, what army should I start with? And I like to tell them, well, what are you? Sometimes I get funny looks. And I'm like, you know, what's your background? Do, do what your background is if you can't decide. Unless you hate where you come from. Unless you hate your own people, which I guess is possible. These are some pilgrims. Battling monks from museum miniatures. I don't know why they're in this bag. We'll just put them right back in the bag. Okay, here's a donkey with some urns. He's one of the candidates. Goddamn Numidians. <laughs> Could paint some of those as allies from the Romans. What's this? Extra Roman figures. I don't normally... Oh, look, it's a confused general. I have one of those. Um, I don't usually just throw shit in here. But it's apparently happened. Oh, I actually have two confused generals. Look at that. Mm, that's it. No more... Uh, looking for baggage horses. All I need is like four. Maybe three would probably be fine. I don't need anybody walking down the road with them. Because then it limits the what armies I could use them as. No reason to do that. Okay. What's in here? I don't know. Maybe leftover Scythians? Yeah, I think that's what they are. I had a Scythian army or two and I sold those a while ago. These are more medievals. Medievals galore. What's this? These are Armenians. Okay, these are allies to my... Um, you know what? I'm not going to hide them. They're allies to my Byzantines. And one of the Byzantine things is going to need them. Those are from Old Glory. Da -da 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 -da. Late Imperial armies are also Old Glory. Nice figures. I agree. Middle Imperial Roman was your first. Are you Middle Imperial Roman? <laughs> uh, who in the hell is in here? Oh, these are like re some Renaissance figures. Oh, these are figures I got from Marty and shit. Yeah, this, that's not going to be appropriate. What we got here. Koreans. Oh, these are figures I was going to use for... Oh, I know who these guys are. This is the... Uh, the Kite and Lyo figures. Yeah, the Kite and Lyo army to do. With some old Naismith figures. Okay, this is... These are successor guys. For my... Uh, for my other... For my Seleucids that I never got a chance to do. From uh, Tin Soldier. These are first century Roman army. Old glory figures. Early Imperial, early Impies. Chinese horse. I don't know why they're there by themselves. What in the hell are these? Oh, it says Goths, and that's what they are. More Goths. Oh, these are like German Landschneck and stuff. This last bag having it. 
Asians. Okay. So that bag I moved off to the side. There was Arabs. Avoid it. Any more of these pack horses are going to be. I don't have a ton of them, but I have collected some over the ages. And uh, let's see. Let's see. We have a ton of stuff here. Get in over 20 years. And this shit's heavy too. This bag. You've always been a fan of Roman military history. I never played anything Roman before DBA. Thinking Romans, there's some right now. All right, let's see what's in this Arab. I know there's a ton of extra horses in here. just don't care. Okay. I wish I'd done all this filming when I had 20-20 vision. I didn't have to take my glasses off. All right, what do we got here? This looks like part of my project and this was right at the time period when DBA 3.0 came out. I was going to build a, uh, an Abbasid army that had the deep bow stands. And I got all the figures together. You can see they were going to have kind of a theme. They were going to have kind of this bluish green, some of the units. And never got off the ground. There's not going to be any pack horses in here. In this little sub bag within the bag. You know, so I never got around to painting them. Never got around to finish them. And it's back, you know, when you have tournaments. When you have a tournament and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this, this, and the other. And then you get off to a rocky start. You can't make the tournament. And then you're like, well, if I'm not going to make the tournament, I'm not going to finish the army. And that's what happens. So I am, oh look, some extra pennies. We'll recycle those. Um, I, I, I do not welcome the tournaments coming back for that reason. Um, so now I'm like, I'm gonna build the next army and if it works in a tournament, it works in a tournament. And if not, well then, who cares? But I'm gonna keep moving forward. All right, what's in here? This is, oh, this is a Zandravolt army that I also put together, so. Good. I put a Mameluk one. A couple months ago, I put a Mameluk army together with that. Okay, so this is Museum Miniatures. These are all Seljuk Turk figures. And Museum Miniatures only has one post on each one, one pose on each figure. Unless you have like a command pack. But these, I ended up picking them up for a dollar a pack. And I just wasn't going to, I just wasn't going to pass that up at Historicon. So I've got all these yellow bags are museums, and they're all Seljuk Turks. See, that's what happens. I got a good, great deal on Seljuk Turks. I'm like, oh, I'll do them soon. And then Luke goes and buys an army, and who is it? It's the Seljuk Turks. So my interest in doing them is kind of, you know, moved to the bottom of the pile. It doesn't mean I'm never going to do them. Just the interest in, in doing them next is kind of uh, low. Now, maybe all the pack horses I have. And that's fine. Three, three would work. It'd be nice not to use one that had the Roman shields on it, but I'll use it if I have to. I don't have to use a... I need a baggage element anyways. They're decent figures. Like you guys can see that. Well, 
Come on, any loose horses in here? Loose baggage horses, I should say. Yes! This one. Please don't have Roman shit on it. It doesn't. Excellent. And was there another one? I thought they were in the bottom of one of these bags, so... Okay, mission accomplished. I may not know where everything is, but I, I know where they're not. I know where they're not hanging out. get out of the drone view here. Yeah, yeah, of course. You guys need to keep it down over there. All right, so we've got this one that has some, this one that has some urns, this one that has some packs on it, and this one that also has some other ones. I wish that, I wish it didn't have these Roman shields on it. All right. Let's go ahead and put this back in the closet. So that I'm able to get in here. stands. That's going to be a 40 by 40 with the magnet. We the fast blade stand. It's going to be one of these. Magnet. And then we have three Polish knights. One already has a magnet on it. together. That goes with that. This goes with this. Got it. Yeah, so my Byzantine morph is going to have I'm going to morph it into the Constantinian Byzantine as well. And the Constantinian Byzantine actually have uh, a couple of spearmen that are Armenians. And I've got Armenian figures. But I, have, I have a Cilician Armenian army that I picked up to do. So when we do the Byzantines, we're going to do Komnenin. We're going to do Komnenin A and B. And... Um, we're going to do Constantinian also. Knock them all out. Because the cavalry is going to be the same for all three. And we'll do an unboxing on some of those figures when they come in, but I mainly just got them for a variety of poses.
Litco stands with Litco heavy duty magnetic basing. So let's look at these horses. God, they're awfully small. Let's clean these things up. And then they should be the, um, my figure should be about dry enough to go ahead and epoxy them. That was the whole point. Get this, do this other stuff while I'm waiting for that to sit. You know, I'm gonna have to do it anyways. Just keep on plugging away. And I don't know who the hell makes these horses. I picked pick these up off a of flea market, no doubt. Figures somebody else didn't love. This is going to be the baggage element that we can use for collision course and also the, the camp for uh, the Moldavians and, and other people that I don't have a camp for. Well, I think now we can actually do something different with this. I like these urns. Urns are cool. Clay pots. You break it, you buy it. Actually, a camp can be as small as half a base width by a base width. So it can be 40 by 20. You could have a camp that is this sized. As crazy as that may seem. It's crazy. I got four different, complete, completely different horses. They almost look like a different scale. I think they're just like a mule. Well, now I can use this. I haven't got this hasn't made it out to the car yet. That's what this is for. My wife has got me a little vacuum to vacuum out my car. And now... That's right. Keep that shit tidy. Let's glue these down. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna base the Roman one anyways. I think I'm gonna put it on the stand. Four little horses on there. I know, I just vacuumed it, I might have to vacuum again. Now it's a good habit to get into. I've been kind of slack when it comes to that. I just end up just blowing my shit everywhere and then I, then I create a mess. I want to try to keep this stuff in order, not because I'm a neat freak, but it helps me stay focused and not, not be distracted by every little thing taking some of this old glue off okay doesn't have to be perfect
just announced today, today or yesterday, they were running a 2.2 tournament in Spain. I guess, like in uh, Steve's region, 3.0 really hasn't taken off. You know, you got to play what people around you want to play, too. So, there's other rule systems that came out that the people here in Florida had no interest in playing. So, you know. Marty, about time you woke up. Storm hit me. Eh, calling it a storm is probably not accurate. The power didn't go out, but the internet went out for four hours. So we just mobile. We just went on mobile there for a little bit. Still got stuff done. Other than that, a ton of rain. A ton of rain between yesterday and today. And it's, it's beautiful outside. It's like I'm in another dimension. And um, it's actually cool. It's in the 50s. So... Must have been a front. What is the temperature right now? 56. We're in the middle of the day and it's 56. That's cold for here. Well, that's not a complaint. I'm, I'll take that every day. But it, that's unusual. That just doesn't happen just really for no reason. But yeah, it rained like a mow. And um, that's fine. I, just don't, I don't need any rain on a work day. Okay. So here we have our little pack mules done. That'll be for um, a baggage element. I think we'll throw that. I'm going to throw that Roman shield in there, make it four. And so what if it has a Roman shield on it? We'll make it look old or something like that. Like they, they found that after hundreds of years. So I've talked to these guys. They play 2.2 in Barcelona. Well, that's not really Spain now, is it? That's Frain, French Spain. All right. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and epoxy these guys down. And while they're drying, we'll paint some poles black. Then when the po black poles are being drying, we'll goop these guys. Then while the goop is drying, we'll go back and paint some of the poles. I leapfrog that way and still get some stuff done. Okay. So here is the stand for these guys. And where's my two friends? The epoxies. The epoxies. And my mixer. And I moved all the cardboard to the closet, didn't I? Yep. Figures. Well, I reorganize things to make it better, but of course it means they're also farther away from me. This is some of the best material ever. The black, the back, the black? No, the back of, uh, of any of those um, pads of paper. Depends who I talk to. <laughs> Are you from Frain? You got to play whatever people want to play, you know? I just, there's a couple things about 2.2 I just wouldn't be able to handle anymore. And chief amongst those is measuring all the corners. I'm just not going to do that anymore. That's a pain in the ass. I, I do not want to do that anymore. I don't think I could go back. I don't think I'd go back and play 2.2. But again, if that's what you like to play, that's what you like to play. I know somebody recently was asking, hey, anybody play 1.0? I'm like, never played it. It predated my involvement in DBA, and it's probably a good thing because it would just be something else I'd have to unlearn. All right, while that is drying up, this is probably a this is probably a disaster in the making. What I'm about to do, because I don't usually have epoxy out while I do this. We're going to pull these guys off the stand and just come in here. 
Should just be able just to wiggle it. Bam, done. Come in here, wiggle. Same thing, come in here, wiggle it. This is why I don't use a pock. This is why I don't use super glue to glue things down. Because as soon as you break that, it just it doesn't hold anymore. Okay, that guy holds pretty straight. That guy's straight enough. Is this guy straight? Yep. All right. So on the stand, we got the flag bearer. We got the general. which is wobbly-ish. And we got this one. Now the interesting thing is, I may have to do something different. Normally I like the flag up against the general. But the guy is holding the flag, and the reason I did it is because it was only one, there was many of that pose. So if I messed it up, then I'd have another guy to do it. I'm gonna put the flag to the outside because that way you've got the guy on the right side looking out and then this guy's looking this way yeah that's how we're going to do it all right so let's just bring this over here and just dip it I don't usually like putting the flag to the outside because it kind of helps protect it. But I like the figures facing. I don't want the figure on this side looking this way and the figure on this side looking that way. It's kind of an eyesore. And let's move them towards the back a little bit. So we can put the general in the middle. And the nice guy, the guy with the spear is actually behind the general, so it holds that figure from falling down. So that's what we're looking like. And that's gonna be uh, Stephen the Great of Moldavia. Let's see if we can do, let's see if we can do a little something. this one we need to tinker with. There we go. And and yep, he looks like a, he's got the face of a thundercat. Meow. <laughs> yeah, that's just the way the sculpting is. Okay, so we'll let this guy dry over here. That's the Moldavian Knight stand. Cross-eyed general. Eh, not the cross-eyed general, much as much as the uh, pussy face general. He has a he looks like he's a cat-like face. You know? I'm sure he he fights all sissy like we'll be making fun of him. It's a night general, so there's a good chance of that happening. You never know what you're going to get with one of those guys. They're either going to be a badass or... 
fail miserably. All right. Fights like a pussy, but he has a face of a thundercat. <laughs> oh, making fun of the guy already, and he hasn't even thought about it. I need to find something made of plastic. I'll be right back. Yes, of course, that's the problem. The zombies are awake. And you wonder why I paint at 4 o'clock in the morning. All right, this will work. All right, a brush that's not loved. Polish Axemen. Three shall be the number of Polish Axemen. This stuff is supposedly self-leveling. So if you put too much of it down, it's supposed to be just fine with that. We'll find out. Not sure that the pack horses are done, so let's go in here and do the knights. Including some knights by Falcon. Falcon figures. Could have painted it an easel piece. Well, I didn't design the figure. Maybe just got in a fight with somebody that was really good at a shovel. Ah, shut up in your face. Dong. He'll be fine. Maybe that's what Moldavians all look like. Oh, you know any Moldavians? Still better sculpted than I would do, so.
Old school Falcon figures. One of those manufacturers that kind of fell off the face of the earth. And we're going to paint, be painting these guys in pairs like we normally do. So if I'm doing the same poses, I tend to paint those poses the same. Uh, no, I tend to paint them in, in, in sequence. So I don't end up accidentally painting both figures in a similar fashion. I want them differently. Even though they're going to be on a different stand, I want to make sure that, you know, if this guy's got this cloth coverings and it's almost all in red, I don't want to do the same thing with the next guy. Although red was a really common color for the poles. Very common color. Um, I just read about that recently. Uh, what's another Falcon guy? These are the Falcon guys charging. Hey, there's a fellow from Moldova working in our Pleasant Grove, Utah McDonald's. Really? Huh. Does he look like he got hit with a frying pan? Oh, the, fig the figure actually looked fine. And I just painted him and then, you know, I was chit-chatting with you guys. The next thing you know, I was like, man, he's got an interesting forehead. And then it's like, damn, he's all forehead. Oh, well. He could be Stephen the Great, the big fat forehead. The great big fat forehead. Invariably. And welcome, Skylab. Hadn't seen you in a little while. Uh, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go to a smaller brush. This thing is just like overkill. It's a little too much like trying to mow on to a B29. This is more like it. You can tell which ones I use for priming because I got the black all still stuck in them. Invariably, something will be left off and I'm going to have to touch them up again. So it's not a big deal if that happens. It's par for the course. This stuff is a lot better than just about any other paint as far as getting in all the recesses. So if bubbles do appear and they pop and they show white metal, um, not primed, it's a lot easier to go in there and, and fix that. Is it pretty much goes on almost like thin down in black enamel paint, even though it's polyurethane based is what I understand. It does, if it gets on your fingers, it's harder to get off your fingers than regular acrylic paint. It's definitely different. Um, it's not as bad as enamel paint, but and the nice thing I like about it is, is it goes on easy and it has zero smell. Don't know what it tastes like. I'll have to leave, leave that up to you guys. Leave that up to you folks. Okay. 
Now, normally, I would like to just finish the Moldavian guys before I touch these, but you know, things have to dry, and there's no point in not doing something else. I might as well do something that I'm going to have to do here shortly. And these guys are Essex miniatures. Four more to go. These look like some, actually, some decent figures to paint. I think they're going to turn out really well. I'm not a big fan of Essex's poses many times, but I can mix and match them however I want. They're kind of, that kind of helps that situation. But just having a bunch of guys in weird poses, all of them on the same stand. Yeah, I want some different poses in there. So, I, I am a big fan of mixing manufacturers, because that way you've got different variety for that stuff. <laughs> Tony back, I am. Tony back. Yep. Told you, we're going to get some painting on this weekend. These are all poles. Going to be some blues and whites and reds on these guys. And we're going to do the basing a slightly different. So they'll be easier to tell apart from the uh, Moldavians. So, should look pretty cool. squirt a little bit more out, aren't I? I don't know what the hell that is stuck to it. Let's get that out before we create a mess. Probably old dried polyurethane. This guy has a hound skull type helmet. Oh, his face almost looks like a duck with that helmet, more than a dog.
two left. We finally got all of Dracula's debut Battle Night Watch. Looked fun. How's your appraisal of your army so far? Uh, I like them, I, but it's what I it's what I suspected. I suspect I'm gonna like that army as much as I'd like my Irish. Is they're the, kind of the same thing? They're real light. Um. They actually have one higher aggression, Dracula's army. Um, I like them. But then I don't have a problem with an army that has a lot of Saloy. I have a bigger problem with army that has too much light horse. Because um, Saloy can handle being in the open a lot better than light horse can be in, in, in bad going terrain. So... Um, doesn't mean I don't like light horse. I'm just saying that they can't deal with, um, being in terrain much. So be interesting to do when we, when we play through their enemies, have the fight between them and the Ottomans, how it goes. I think it'll be, uh, I think it'll be a pretty good matchup, but we're going to keep this army's stats in a different line. I'm not going to keep them in the same one. This is Moldavians, even though it's the same army list, just with a different general. We'll keep them in a different category, just so we can see how the Valakians did as opposed to uh, the the Moldavians. Because it's it's the same army. Uh, the only difference is, is that this one's going to have a knight general as opposed to a cav general. And to be honest with you, I like the cavalry general a lot. Um, it's kind of like the best of both worlds. And they're very fast, so they can they can go and show up out of the back, out of the backfield and plug the hole where you need to. I'm a fan of cavalry generals. I'm gonna have to see if there's some coffee. Actually, I know there's no coffee, man. Ugh. Hold on one second. Put this on mute.
Taran, 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 taran. What spurred my interest in Balkan armies? Um, well, they fight my Ottomans. And that, they fight my Ottomans. And they're light. And it looks like there was a lot of different ways to play them. That's it. <laughs> and they're not super popular. I'm not a big fan of doing armies that everybody else does. Do you really need me to see me do an, a Norman army? There's lots of you guys already do them. I don't have anything against them, but I'd rather you do more unusual armies. And I could play them lots of different ways. They have a lot of skirmishers, so they're really light. I like that. As long as there's some kind of heraldry, that's what I really like. Where I can tell, looking at the DBMM books, if they're Valekians with Vol Vlad, no Poles, correct. And if Moldavians with Stefan, Polish allies, that's correct. And Vlad is the one that can have the Hungarian allies, I believe. Um, that's correct. So we will use the, when we use these Poles, it will be, I mean, you can play them however the hell you want in DBA, but... Since I know better, I'm not going to play them wrong. I've got no interest in doing that. You know, I'm not going to use Vlad with Polish allies. Even though the DBA book, it does not necessarily preclude you from doing that. But I know better. So. But Balkans, yeah, people don't do them. They're not super popular. You know, and they fight the Hungarians. They can use my Hungarians as an ally. So they just fit really nicely in the other stuff that I already had of the period. And what ended up happening was... I ended up doing a horse trade with somebody, and they gave me this army. Uh, they saw that I was, I was working on my Hungarians at the time, and they traded me this army for uh, Lydians. I had Lydians. They wanted some Lydians that, that I had. I had. I had a couple of armies worth of Lydians, one from Chariot and one of them from Falcon. And I still wouldn't have painted the Lydians if I had them. So... Lydians, you just have to create too much shit out of nowhere. You have to create, you know, shield patterns. And, and, I, and I don't mind doing that, but I prefer, um, I prefer only creating some things. You know, so it's not pulling everything out of my nether regions. Let's put these guys down here to dry. Get them out of the way. DBA list doesn't mention the distinction. It doesn't. Well, I got all the DBMM, all the DBMM books. The new DBMM books. I got the DBM books also, but the DBMM is what 3.0 is supposedly based on. When we do the poles, we will do the fast blades first. They paint quicker. Let's not hide them so much. We'll come back and paint the, the horses black. Let's go ahead and goop these guys. All right, for that, we need our gooping device, a goopy holder. This is why you magnetize your stands. So you can do crazy stuff like this. And I can hold it without holding it. All right, let's get the new and improved goop, which by the way, the jury is out. I do like this stuff better than the Liquitex. Not a ton better, but I like it better. I like it so much, I don't know where I put it. <laughs> it's down, oh, it has a red lid. I had a black lid. I didn't know that. Yeah, I like the ground texture. I like this stuff better than, than the resin sand. And it's good because the resin sand isn't made anymore. It just has a, a, a more uh, rough texture. I didn't switch to it because I wasn't happy with the previous one. I just, they stopped manufacturing it. Alright. I did a crap job of
cleaning these tools off. Okay, we clean this thing off. All right. The clutter's starting to grow. Get rid of the clutter. All right. all over me it'll come off with a just more, a little bit more difficult to come off than just with water and if I'm lucky late today I'll be able to paint this more than likely won't be till in the morning oh let's not forget because I like to forget to do this and it's happened before Let's get my rocks out. Not that one. That one. I'm trying to use all of them. Now. Real granite pieces. Please don't ask me where to get those. I don't know. I got them from work as a sample. And when I run out of them, it's going to be a sad day. I'm nowhere near running out of them. So the nice thing is, none of that gets wasted. Um, I'll only take them out one or two of them that, as I need them. All right, let's put this stuff in. Let's go long. Squish this in. So now that I like this stuff, I may order another bottle of it just to have it on hand in case they decide to do something weird like discontinue this material. What in the heck is this? There we go. Notification. Hey, check out this video from somebody you're following. I can't. I'm making my own content. 
I'm terrible about watching other people's content. I just, I don't have time for it anymore. The only complaint about this material and the Liquitex as well is when you're applying it, sometimes it'll pull back onto itself. So you're trying to loosen it off the, the sculpting tool and instead of it sticking to the stand, it ends up sticking to the, the knife. We'll call this a knife even though it's not very knifey. Knifeish. Knifely. It's not very knifely. How knife of you? This army, unfortunately, has what I like to call a choice from hell. Um, it has a lot of mandatory elements. The, 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 element, the general can be either cavalry or a knight, and you have to have three light horse, and you have to have a huge amount of skirmishers. Uh, and then you can have a couple bowmen. They can either be fast bowmen or solid bowmen. I opted for the fast bowmen. Uh, I didn't want anybody really slow in this army, where they needed to just do hit and runs and stuff like that. And then you have one element that's a choice from hell. And you can either have another light horse, which I neglected to build. They don't need a fourth light horse. Um, or a fast horde, which would be useful. And, or an artillery, which would also be useful. But you're forced of making the, the choice between having an artillery and a fast horde. And honestly, I'd like to have both. But... I did build both of those. Because if I run this army in Fast and Furious, I have to take the Fast Horde. The artillery is a non-allowed element in that uh, tournament setting. It was not considered fast. This material is definitely a lot sandier. When you put this on, it almost feels like you could feel the, the sand grit. So it was a hit. It was a hit. I like I like it better. Going off to find the barbecue food cart. Have fun, Tony and everyone. Barbecue food cart. Like a food truck. There's an Indian food truck here that's awesome. I don't know where it is though. The food trucks don't do a very good job of announcing where they're going to be. I think I would do a lot better job if you want people to come to your place. But they like to go to breweries and stuff like that. The Indian one's particularly good. If you like Indian food, and I do. Another DBA army in the horizon is uh, I want to build a, an army with three elephants. Not because I think they're super powerful, just because, uh, you know, they're cute. I tend to not like elements that take two pips to move them. Horde maybe being the exception. I don't mind horde so much. 
Okay, I think we're about done with this. Away. Let's get our half rocks. Two flat ones and a bag of gravel. Lots for sale. Get your fresh rocks here. should be enough all right let's put the fat one here it's got a little cousin hanging out next to it oh I wasted one You did not. Okay. Make sure to wipe the edges down. I like my stands fitting flush with other stands. Makes life so much easier. Okay. And we will paint that before we go and add the flag, because otherwise you have to work around the flag and that's kind of a pain. Okay, to be continued. It's 2 p.m., so maybe around 8 we can do that guy. Do him! Do him now! All right, um, the brush I was using. That's strange I would have dropped that brush in there. Good thing I... Good save. That one doesn't deserve to just hang out in it. It's not a very bad brush. All right, back to the polyurethane. drop should be enough. This stuff is expensive. It goes a long way. Uh-oh.
Okay. Coffee was in order. Okay. I definitely have to be off by an hour and a half. So it won't be more than an hour and a half. I'll be back later. Don't worry. You know. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to make hay while the sun still shines here. Get as much done here as I can. Why well, do? Let this dry, of course. Uh-oh. A new message. Three jumbos, huh? Successors, Indians, or Asians? Southeast Asians, I meant. I'm going to build the Tamil army. I've got all the figures for the Tamil, and somebody put a painting guide out there that looks really cool. So that's my plan, is to do the Tamil at some point. Joe said he's going to do the um, Siamese. So that's another cool army. Cursai Majors makes those, but I found a cool painting guide of Tamil. And um, that's my plan at some point. And I want to do elephants with face paint on the elephants. So. Should be cool. Of course, with a mixture of manufacturers. We wouldn't do it any other way if it wasn't that. I think the, I think this Balakian Moldavian army is the only army I have that I've done recently that does, that's only one single manufacturer. I think it's the only one. I love mixing and matching stuff. You know, people are different sizes. Look, if I can use these tiny ass little horses, I could pretty much use anything. I use one in my Irish army. There's a guy in there who's like almost 20 millimeter tall. He's a big guy. He's a big, he's the Irishman that eats all the porridge. You know, there's, people are different sizes. What doesn't work is if you're using an army, like if you're doing like World War II figures, using all kinds of different sizes and, you know, guys have like submachine guns that are different sizes. That, does, that doesn't work. But the actual physical part, sure. Looks just fine. Tamil, Tamil. And they have a cool flag. So to be continued. But the Byzantines won out. We're going to be doing a big Byzantine morph. So the question now becomes, when I'm done with these guys and they're dry, we're going to rinse this out, we're going to wash our hands, and the question is, what can we work on next? Are these Polish Axemen dry? They are. So that's what we're doing next while the basing on the Moldavians is done. So let's move these pack horses off, go rinse our hands, and we'll be right back and learn about some Polish Axemen.
All right, so let's consult our uh, our reference material on the period. Let's move this stuff off to the side. Let's see if I can get by here without creating a catastrophe. And we're going to go to Armies and of the Middle Ages, Volume 2. This guy right here by Ian Heath. And the poles are in here. And there is an illustration of these very Polish axemen in here, I bet. Guaranteed. Figure one thirty eight. So let's find out all. Let's find out all about them. Figure one thirty eight. Polish town militiamen, fourteenth to fifteenth centuries. Murderous rustics, the Teutonic Knights called them. A description doubtless prompted by both their fierceness in battle, and their use of a vicious range of bardiche axes and other lethal pole arms, which wielded two-handed in battle, proved particularly effective against crowded horsemen. Maces and clubs were also popular, and for secondary armament, this figure has a saber. Shields were largely dispensed with since both hands were needed in action, although those armed only with mace or sword often still carried them. His armor comprises a short male corselet under a leather caftan, plus male gauntlets with plate cuffs. The felt cap is one of a variety of similar headwear popular in Poland during this period. 138A, this a guy with a little happy hat up here. Uh, 138A, showing an alternative reminiscent of Balkan styles. General clothing colors worn, ah, this is where we want to get to. General clothing colors worn by the Polish lower classes were same as elsewhere in Europe, i.e. principally many shades of brown, green, gray, blue, and dark red. If the, pictorial so if the pictorial sources are to be relied on, reds and blues predominated amongst the upper classes. All the Poles depicted above are dressed and armed in native Polish styles. However, it should be noted that Polish manuscripts and paintings also show soldiers dressed and equipped identically to their German and Western European counterparts. Okay, so what does it say? Uh, brown, green, gray, blue, and dark red. All right, so that was useless. <laughs> that was damn near useless. But I've looked at it. I've looked at it, and now there's no doubt to, you know, the freedom that I supposedly have in how to paint those guys. So I could have already told you that I wasn't going to make them bright. You know, they're, if, they, if, they have, if they have enough money for bright, bright clothes, they'd be riding horses. You know? So it's Polish men wielding a poleaxe. Yes, that's, that's what we learned. Yes. It's not women. <laughs> not this time, pal. So let me do a quick search. Um, I guess if I find something cool, I could put it up here on the screen. Let me minimize this. Minimize that. Come up here. And let's do a Google image search for Polish Axe Men. Well, here's a couple of pictures of the Essex figures painted in bright colors. What the hell happened here? Oh, here it is, images. <laughs> I don't want to paint them like that. Main thing is the hats. What color do they show these guys with the hats? They almost look like they'd be a black hat.
Okay, that was useless, so we will go with our own interpretation of these guys. I just want to uh, I just want to look into that before I decide to make a decision and then afterwards look into and then find out that oh they all, their hat was always red. You know. I don't want to paint things wrong on purpose. That's not my purpose in life. Okay. So let's get this back out here. Polish men wearing a fielding an axe, exactly. Useless. All right. Make sure these guys are fully dry. <laughs> and let's catch the spots that we missed in black. As always, that's always the case. Let's get the magic drippings out, also known as the, the thinner. And touch up any of the stuff that we happen to have missed. which is not much, but still, I'd rather deal with that now than later. More bearded fellows. All right, well, that's done. That was simple. Looks like I already trashed my paper towel thingy. Do, 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 do. That doesn't need to be there. That can be put away. This can be put away. Yeah, pretty much interested in just about all the armies. There's only a handful of armies, maybe eight, ten if I'm really pushing it, that would never in a million years build. And they're mostly due to figure availability or um, monotone troop types. You know, or troop types that maybe only one manufacturer is, makes them and they're, they're not very good and they don't have multiple poses. So something like the Maori... The Maori are like all blade, and um, there's only one manufacturer that makes them, and they, and they don't look very good. And I think they're all in one pose. Like, why in the hell would I bother making them? You know, um, if they made cool figures for them, yeah, sure. Like uh, Joe's got some um, American Indians, some uh, north the northwestern Indians, and there's some cool figures by Eureka. Those guys actually have, and they have, they have a pretty interesting army list. They've got some blade and some bows, and I can't think of what else they have, but, you know, it's a viable army. Okay, so, um, we get to make these guys look rustic. Cool. Well, it looks like they're wearing hose. So, if I'm going to have anything kind of color on them, I think I'm going to keep it to the hose part. I don't want this big jacket that they're wearing to be really... That'd be super colorful. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, let's get a yucky color. Okay, and this yucky color is going to be called medium gray, and it looks really gray on there, but it's got a lot of brown brownness to it. And yes, we're going to paint them by the each. I got 
this really dark gray. We're going to paint everything in this really dark gray on his jacket. Looks like we've got a lot less to talk about now after we already solved all the world's problems this morning. Okay, let's just start bringing it up. So this guy's relatively simple. He's got a jacket, he's got a belt. He has a face, hair, uh, a bardish axe, um, a belt with a saber, and shoes. And it sounds like a lot of stuff, but he doesn't have that much stuff. These guys should paint fairly quickly. Um, he should paint fairly quickly. Not wearing that much of a hurry, but... I think I should be able to get these three, this fast blade stand done. The three figures done between today and tomorrow. Ah, we still have these interlopers coming in and throwing their random code words. I think they're just throwing characters on there so they can get a hundredth of a penny. One way to get rid of those interlopers is only have people post or subscribe to my channel. But then, you know, how are people going to figure that out? I don't know. It hasn't gotten too bad. They've just been posting these random codes and stuff, and they haven't been throwing like, throwing like porn sites and stuff like that. If they started doing stuff like that, yeah, we'd have to put a lock on that. We don't, that, we don't want to go down that direction. That's not what I'm here for, so... You can watch that stuff on your own. We don't need to promote it here. Let's get back up to this core color now.
I got a couple of errands I need to run. I got to go get gas. What else? That's it. I'll only get gas if it's not. I'm not waiting in line for gas. It's not like I'm out. look in Osprey's medieval Polish book didn't give anything useful for these guys yeah that's why I didn't buy that book <laughs> mm. I promise you Jared they will turn out great I promise you these guys have really good faces he doesn't have a Thundercat face <laughs> I'll be honest with you the fact that I have to paint these drab is kind of a blessing because I've honestly been really enjoying playing these painting these armies that are really a bunch of drab wearing dudes most people paint their figures particularly bright so uh, it's kind of a nice alternative to have um, an army that's not painted so well, yet at the same time, they have a lot of character. All right, and we have a white that's alive. That's good. So we'll come over here. Jared, you're out in Australia, man. What? There's some crazy times we're at. You're like a night owl or something, or maybe you work nights or whatever. Either way, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate it. I know that it's it's morning when it's night here, and it's night here when it's and, and it's it's when it's night here. It's morning. You know what I mean. You're like on the opposite, almost opposite schedule. I really want to get, I really want to start working on the Byzantines. We're going to have fun with that. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. Already started uh, listening to a new book on the Byzantines. I've listened to some, but just, I'm like, I got to use up these audible credits. And I'm not listening to it as much as I used to because. I'm creating content here. Normally, I'd be listening to Audible while I'd paint. Okay, this guy's done. His jacket color. We got a Bardish axe and hose. Let's do a hose. Let's do color, but not too colorful. So let's look over here in my grays. Couldn't sleep tonight. Old army injuries. You've helped me pass the night more comfortably. And you're you're more than welcome. More than welcome. Sorry about your injuries, man. I hope the other guy took it worse than you. I know odds are it was probably in a non-conflict zone, but I'm glad to be of help. I've experienced back pain once where I couldn't sleep and it was it's crazy it's maddening is what it is it was not like the pain was that bad it was just like no matter what position you're in you weren't comfortable and it's only happened to me one time thankfully looking forward to this Tamil heffalumps you mentioned oh man they're a ways off they're a ways off well man we'll make them cute and we'll do funny voices while we paint them and everything that's half the fun of painting painting for foreign armies is making foreign voices with them you know as cartoonish and over the top as they are 
we're not trying to disrespect anybody. We're just having fun and trying to get in the spirit of things, you know. But I'm old school, you know. We used to laugh about stuff, and I guess you can't do that anymore. Well, I can. <laughs> you know, if I didn't like a if I didn't like a group of people, why would I be building one of their armies just to make fun of them? I mean, that's <laughs> that's absurd, you know. That's absurd. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to them. Looking forward to them. My challenge is going to be to do face paint on them, and not a, not complete, not their face completely painted, you know, but accents and stuff, you know, that Buddhist thing that they do, you know. So, that's cool. L looking forward to that. And uh, there was an empire that was actually really big, and it was called the Chola Empire. And um, from about the 900s through like 1200, they were pretty. They were pretty big. They they. They had a good chunk of India along the southern and, uh, and eastern coastline up, up the way through Burma, uh, Bangkok, and into Indonesia. Um, they had a pretty big thing there, and they would be considered the Tamil, one of the Tamil um, uh, lists. Uh, there's actually a, an article that someone published in a in the slingshot magazine that actually made a an army list specific for them that it changed the standard list for um for the uh the tamil a little bit but um yeah i've got a lot of elephants you know i was looking through this i love going to these flea markets and I was looking at the time for some nights for my condata which i never ended up getting that project off the ground because Joe started playing DBA and he built an Italian Kandata army and, you know, more power to him. I was already working on something else. But if somebody in my play group already has an army, there's no reason for me to go and build the same army, you know. When there's 200 other armies that I'm interested in doing, that doesn't mean I'm never going to do them. I'm just not going to do them anytime soon. But in that, in that box I was looking for, I'm like, I'm just looking to see what... The guy's like, hey, can I help you? I'm just looking to see what kind of knights are in here. He's like, whole box, 10 bucks. And I'm like, I'd already seen some knights in there. And I'm like, well, let me look through here. Elephant, elephant, another elephant, another elephant. It was like freaking seven elephants or something in there. So I'm like, well, I'll take them. And um, some of them were museum museum elephants. And which, you know, and some Essex elephants in there. And I'm like, all right. All right, we can do that. And... Um, yeah, I look forward to building those guys. They'll be colorful. Mainly, there's a, a painting guide that somebody somebody gave me some ideas. I may not be exactly accurate or whatever, but it gave me kind of a. It, it looks all right. And um, I like the I like the challenge to make an army that maybe a lot of information isn't known about them and make them look really interesting painting without them being outlandish. I kind of take that as a challenge um, as I did the, um, the Amorites and really enjoyed how the Amorites turned out. And I mean, we don't know jack shit about them, you know, but it made them look interesting. And uh, I think I'm going to do the same thing with the, uh, with the Tamil is make them look interesting. And they have a cool flag. Yes, that is that is a, that is an important point for some of us. Okay, so we did that. Boots. We're gonna stick the dark brown boots. I think we're ready to do the Bardiche axe handle. Let's do that. We're just gonna be lazy and we're gonna grab the. Well, there's not one called wood brown, but there's the earth brown one. I think we can do that. Flat earth. Sorry. Not with brown, flatters. Half lumps, yeah. The Tamil used to be a real power army in 2.2. Because in 2.2, spear were quick killed by elephants, but blades weren't. 
And elephants were only four against ground. So you just throw a bunch of uh, blades up against elephants and they can tie them up. And I think they have a fair number of blades and elephants. So they were almost like a power army. That's not why I want to build them. I want to build them because they fit into the time period that we kind of have. And um, I only have one Indian army. That's the Rajputs. And I like them a lot. And they're kind of contemporary to the Rajputs, just in the southern part of India. And elephants are fun to paint, and they're cute. You know, are they like a war-winning strategy? I don't think so. Not for me. I should imagine painting Hindu elephants and flags would be similarly satisfying as you paint medieval heraldry. Except that I have to invent things out of nothing. And um, and it's okay. You just have to... It's something. There's something comforting about... When I go and do the Polish heraldry, for instance, a lot of the stuff is already kind of done and I just have to put kind of my take on it as opposed to just get something out of nowhere and make it believable um, and um, you know I'm not opposed to doing it just uh, there's something comforting about just doing your own take on something and most people look at it and it's going to look right because it's what you're used to seeing instead of just creating something out of nothing. Um, but we'll see. I was going to do the, the Siamese army. Joe expressed interest in it. I'm like, I'm letting him do it. I, I honestly get a bigger kick out of painting figures that I like as I like to call them second tier figures you know Kurosan figures are too nice for me to paint you know you don't need me to paint them I need to paint like the real dogs you know figures that have been around forever and nobody cares about them you know and just show you guys that hey you can make second or third tier figures look pretty good if you just take some time and effort into it um some pretend grain on here different colors of, make it look like wood even though it's not wood it's a white metal figure We're going to have to put known oil on this, so let's go ahead and get it over with and do the blade. Let's go over here to metal head corner. With time and effort, I can make first tier figures appear three or third rate. Oh, come on, man. You can do better than that. <laughs> Just get set small goals. Just like, you know, try to do better on the next army. You'll get better. You know, if you want to, if you just spend time on it, it's. It's, uh, there's nothing more empowering for me to see somebody's figures I like better than my own. So I'm like, all right, that, all right that, I like that bastard's figures. How do I get mine to be that good? You know, you kind of try to dissect and ask questions. And, and if they're on a butthole, they'll tell you how they did it. 
they're trying to be like, well, I don't want to tell somebody because then they could do it themselves. Like, hey, you know, try to do better. Try to improve. I don't give. I don't mind giving away my secrets. Not really secrets to begin with. Okay, his blade is done there. Boots, we're leaving the boots for last. Because I'll end up scuffing them up just in the process of turning this thing around. I think it's time for his fleshy bits. Had the daughter make me some coffee. Thank goodness. Eight viewers. Welcome, folks. Building some Polish Axemen. Sorry, I didn't change the flag down there. I guess I probably should. But then I have to make another one. And I'm not, I'm not ready to make a Polish flag. My, uh, my troops aren't actually going to have Polish flags. They're, they may have, they're going to have pendants, but there's not going to be one that's uh, going to have a big Polish flag. We're not doing that until we actually build the Polish army, which I have all the troops, I have all the figures for. Um, we're just not going to do them next. They're just a god-awful amount of mounted, very few foot, not a very well-rounded army, um, and not really on my to, short to-do list. At this time. Now we need to get into more details. Do we have a good brush here? Yes, let's try this brush that we broke in this morning. I mean freeze why does it say freeze just 57 degrees I can't wait to step outside in shorts and 57 degrees this has got to be the cold the last cold snap we have unfortunately Unfortunately, all right, now we're going to take this color and mix some sunny skin tone in with it.
right, same color, a little bit more sunny skin tone. I guess I've gotten up enough times today that I'm not particularly tired. Usually if I've been painting this long. And there must have been something last night that was going on with the, with the internet that caused it to finally just give out this morning because I was having a lot of slowness issues and there was nobody at home. Now it seems to be running fine and they're even streaming a movie in the other in the other room so you know check logic at the door a little bit more light and that's right it's pale in Poland blonde I still have some of that yellow going on over there I think I think so I think so you know what I'm actually going to call it right now how long have we been on here a couple hours almost two and a half hours yeah We'll call it. We'll come back this evening when that's dried up a little bit. I gotta go do. Uh, I'm not gonna say honeydew list because there's no honey here to tell me to go do them. But uh, a couple things I need to take care of, and we will be back later this evening. I'm uh, I'm gonna try to paint as much as I can this weekend while I have the freedom to do so. As always, thanks for stopping by.